So Artemis is actually finally here. I'm really excited. Uh, so we've just watched, I don't know if you've been watching, but this um, enormous rocket take this tiny journey very slowly, <laughs> ridiculous pace. I would not want to be behind this super, super, super load. <laughs> so it's moved. So the Artemis 1 is the first step uh, in many stages of essentially returning to the moon and potentially beyond. And Artemis 1 moved from what's called Launch Complex 39 B at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. And there's also a bit that goes on top called the Orion, which is the spacecraft that will actually go to the moon. And so the SLS, which is the rocket launch mega rocket thing that's going up and pushing Orion off, that took about nine and a half hours to, car uh, to cover about ooh, seven kilometers. And the Orion uh, sort of took 10 hours to move. So seven kilometers to travel over 10 hours is a long time. It's traveling between 1.5 kilometers per hour and three kilometers an hour. And, you know, that's a little bit faster than an extremely motivated snail, but not a lot. <laughs> very slow, very slow, very careful. I mean, Bev, we're talking about getting back to the moon, which is so romantic, so exciting. But honestly, we haven't needed that sort of rocket power for a long time. We're talking about a rocket that's 100 meters in length, you know. That's just under two A triples, right? So the big road trains, that's two of those stacked end to end. But let me tell you that it costs a little bit more than those two road trains would, no matter how much truckies love their trucks. We're talking about the, the uh, space launch system, the mega rocket, is like 23.8 billion US dollars. And the Orion spacecraft on top is about uh, 2.4 or 20.4 billion US dollars. So it is a little bit more expensive than your average road train. And, you know, it weighs quite a bit more too. It's, it's just under a just under 3,000 tonnes. So we're talking about pushing something massive out of Earth and it's it's just enormous and very exciting. Yeah, and so no, no surprise that it is taking that long. I mean, let's hope it moves a little faster once it is launched. Um, <laughs> what is it going to do? I mean, this is, as, as you say, we're going back to the future in a way with these missions to the moon. Yes, absolutely. So this will actually... Uh, be the first time we sort of, well, this is the step to getting to the moon. And we haven't been on the moon since I think 1972 or something. It's a very, very long time ago. But as I said, this is part of the Artemis program. Now, this is the first step. This is uncrewed, although I have to query that because it does have a few crew members. Um, it's going to go to the moon and come back, hopefully, over about 42 days. And on board, Bev, this is so great. There are three mannequins, uh, two female style mannequins, and one male style style mannequin, which is a Campos, Helga and Zohar. And the reason they've got two is because they're testing the way that radiation will actually um, interplay with the human body and women tend to suffer worse radiation effects. So that's why they're looking at that. They've also got Sean the sheep and they've also got an iPad to test uh, voice assistant capabilities up there as well. So this whole thing is going to go out 400,000 kilometres beyond, you know, far away from Earth. And it's, it's just such a long, long way. And also at the same time, while we're there, why not push out something else into space? So we're sending two, 10 CubeSats as well and uh, off onto missions that we can't really do from Earth. So CubeSats are usually little satellites. One of them's looking at lunar ice. Another one's actually looking at how yeast respond to radiation. Uh, and so we're using it for science as well, not just a test. But, yeah, it's just one huge test. Uh, it's going to take 42 days, 3 hours and 20 minutes, of course. It's going to be exactly that. It's going to travel just under 2.1 million kilometres. And when it comes in... In Bev, it is going to be coming at a very hot speed of about 40,000 kilometres an hour. And if you know anything about entries into the atmosphere, we're talking about 2,800 degrees Celsius. And that's not really something we can test very well on Earth. So everyone is doing a bit of this, I think. We'll be doing a bit of this in about 42 days from the 29th. Yeah, it's so exciting. So they hopefully want to bring it back as well. But, you know, how soon do you think it will be before it's not just mannequins? going in back to the moon. <laughs> and Sean, and, and Sean. Sean. We shouldn't forget the sheep. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so Artemis 1 is the test. That's just checking that it's all working, that they can recover it from the ocean and all the normal comms and everything, um, and, of course, those heat shields. Uh, then Artemis 2 could actually be out orbiting the moon with, with people on it uh, from 2024, so only a couple of years away. And then the very next year, the plan at this stage uh, is actually people setting foot on the moon 
wounds. So, you know, that's, that's, that's 2025, 20, which is incredibly close when you think about it. I feel like I was talking to you just yesterday, but it was probably a few years ago, and I was sitting there thinking, this is just ages away. But honestly, it's, it's literally a couple of years away. And after that, what's the plan? Well, NASA would actually like to build, and, and also uh, not just NASA, there are a lot of uh, global organisations in this, uh, including Canadian Space Agency, Japanese, and we're actually part of the Artemis Accords as well. But they want to build a uh, basically an orbiting um, sort of lunar orbiter that goes around the moon and, and can actually be a gateway. And what will happen is the astronauts will go there, then they'll leave from the gateway, they'll be taken down to the surface of Mars and actually stay on Mars for a little while, doing some experiments, exploring, uh, really sort of paving the way for potentially pushing to Mars and beyond in the future. So it's soon, Bev, it's soon. Always great to have you on. Thank you so much. Brilliant. Thanks, Bev. Have a great night.